Okay, this is a man cave production. We're here in a man cave and it's December, the middle of the month ish. And uh, we are decorated all for Christmas. As you can see, our Christmas decoration is up. It's the wonderful time of the year. And we're going to use our tapa draft system for the first time. So, here okay, we go. the tapa draft system came in a box just like that. And we're going to open it up, see what's inside. Let's see. I purchased this from Midwest Brewing, home brewing and winemaking supplies. And it's MidwestSupplies.com. So there you go. They got their cheap plug. Comes with my invoice. Looks like a nice catalog and a DVD, which I'll probably watch after I screw this all up. And I see we got our three tap of draft bottles. I think they're six liter bottles. And it says it's enough to make five gallons or to hold five gallons in my home brew, but uh, I do have a bottle standing by. Packed really well, as you can tell. Alright, here is our tap. Let's just get rid of this stuff, man cave style. Throw it on the floor. Alright, more paper. Save the planet! Okay, here is our CO2 cartridges. And uh, there should be six of them in there. Yep, six of them in there. Looks like 16 grams, so they're the little bigger ones than the old tapa draft system. This one only utilizes uh, one cartridge in its um, tap system. The other did two. And that should be it. Empty box. Here's our supplies on my messy table in the man cave. Someone to get those bottles sterilized. You always have to sterilize when you're making beer. Sterilize everything. Even sterilize your wife just to be safe. So uh, we'll be right back to uh, okay. get this show on the road. So here's my setup. I got my bottling bucket down there. I got the uh, tap and drive bottles and everything all sterile. My hose, siphoning hose. Got my bottling hose strapped up around the bucket so it don't drag on the floor. That's Mowgli. He's nuts. He's up for adoption because he's nuts. So if you want him. Just uh, email me or something. So here's my fermenting bucket. Primary fermenter. Got it held on with my gal's grandmother's old blanket. I'm sure she's not going to be thrilled with that. So we're just going to unwrap it from its loving arms. And uh, check the fermenting is done. No more bubbles. So we're going to pop that open and uh, get this beer into the uh, bottling bucket. All right, so there it goes, and there she flows. We got the uh, fermenting bucket uh, draining down into the bottling bucket. I'm making a, a honey nut uh, brown ale. So it looks pretty good. It smelled pretty good. I did a little taste test, and uh, tastes like an ale. And uh, we're going to fill up this bucket, the bottling bucket. As long as Mowgli doesn't stick his nose into the bucket, we'll be okay. And... Uh, We'll get on with the show again. Just wanted to show you guys a just a quick tip or whatever if you can do this for the first time. And I bottle my uh, beer on the floor so I get a good you know gravity pull and I don't have any place to put my uh, fermenting bucket up any higher. Uh, I just turn that little knob down there sideways because it kind of sticks out about a maybe quarter half inch past the bottom of the bucket and uh, you could snap it off. So I just turn it sideways till I'm ready to bottle and then uh, turn it turn it down when I'm when I'm ready to go. Just a little tip for you. Also, another little tip. Remember, when you're making beer, make sure yourself have yourself a little cold one on the side. All right, we'll okay, be back. Okay, so we got the bottling bucket full of bubbly beer. Well, semi-bubbly because it's done fermenting. Fermenting for you English class. And we got the tap turned right here on the old ale pail. And we got our six-liter bottle there ready to go. I got it in my official Halloween holder. This is the man cave, so the Halloween decorations have not been put away. Now, the one thing that made me make this video is because I looked online for this type of draft kit and information about uh, natural carbonation versus the forced carbonation using the type of draft kit. And the information out there is a little sketchy. 
uh, in regards to whether you put the priming sugar into the forced carbonation unit. I'm going to bottle this one and put the carbonation unit onto it without using priming sugar. So no priming sugar is going to go in this bucket. The other issue is some people say that the Tapa Draft kit bottles won't naturally ferment because they leak. Now, this is a newer model. Like I said, the old model used the two CO2 cartridges. This uses the one. So I think this is the newest uh, model. And evidently, they're not supposed to have any problems with the natural carbonation. So I'm going to fill the forced carbonation one, this unit here, with beer with no priming sugar in it. And then I'm going to force carbonate it using only the CO2 unit that comes with the Tapa Draft system. The other two, I'm going to put priming sugar into the batch and put it into the bottle and see how that carbonates. So without further ado, let's just put the wand inside first. Now I was a little, uh, little leery about this because I didn't think the wand would reach to the bottom of the bottle, but the standard wand does. So if you have your Brewer's Best kit, uh, like I do, it will reach. So you can see I'm precariously balancing this and we're just going to open up the, the tap here if i can get it to open excuse me for a minute all right we got it open and let's see if we can get the beer flowing now it only opens one way i guess yes it only opens one way it goes to the left turned it to the right and it didn't now i got my filling wand down in there I don't know how good of a picture this is going to give you, but it is it is flowing in there just nice, you can see. So we got the beer flowing. Look at this, hands-free too. Hey, this is convenient. I like it so far. You want to shoot me a comment? Let me know what you people think. So we're filling up our six-liter uh, bottle, our first one. And again, I'm going to force carbonate this, and I'm not going to use priming sugar. So in about seven days, I think it says, we're going to see. Also, a tip that they say is to, I'm going to refrigerate this bottle first with the cap on it, not the uh, carbonating system on it. I'll probably leave it in there uh, overnight to get cold because they say um, the CO2 gets absorbed in, in the colder liquid as opposed to a room temperature liquid. I guess it takes a long time or it just won't absorb the carbonation. So I'm going, to, I'm going to chill this bottle overnight, then put the carbonating system on it, the CO2 system. And uh, we're going to see how it works from there. As you can see, again, our beer is flowing nicely into the unit. Here's our bottling bucket in case anybody wants to see that again. Here's the inside look of the bottling bucket. And here we go. And as you can see, Mowgli's getting excited over there. Now, this is the clean part of the man cave. I could show you that, kind of, sort of. Here it is, a man cave. All American, of course. Got my lounge chairs. And TV, everything you would want in a man cave. Got my rock band set up. My old mugs, even a growler. I'm just stalling for time here, folks. I'm trying to get this sucker filled. And they say to fill it about an inch from the top. So... I'm going to do that. I'm going to cap that up. Wow, that's some strong beer. Hear them sounds it's making? So, we'll be back. I'm going to do the priming sugar thing and the natural carbonation thing and show you how that thing's all done. Okay, we're back. So, we got the uh, unit filled up, maybe an inch from the top. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, cap on it. Nice and tight. And we're going to take it over to the refrigerator and put it in there to cool down for a day. And then after that, we're going to go up and do the uh, priming sugar. All right, here we are. We're going to put our, our bottle in there. Now, the thing about these bottles is they have these four little nubs on the bottom. I don't know if you can see them, but there's two in the back, two in the front. That's to keep from rolling around in the refrigerator. And the camera's going to get jostled around and upside down when I put this sucker in here, but here we go. See if we can get it to 
There she goes. Here we are in the kitchen. And we got our uh, priming supplies going here. We got the water on. About uh, two cups, I guess. Cup and a half, I estimated. Just like the priming sugar. Now, I was sorely disappointed with the instructions that came with my tapadraft kit, which are pretty much non existent in regard to how much priming sugar to use. Wasn't anything in there about carbonation and just cleaning the unit and the guarantee. Which well, pretty good guarantee. It's guaranteed for a year. But other than that, didn't, you know, see anything useful in there in regards to using the unit, you know, in regards to uh, carbonating things. So, like I said, I did some research online and there's tons of forums you can go to and everybody has their own opinion. But, uh, and I looked on YouTube too to see if there's any definitive way to use it. And really, I couldn't find anything. There was one guy on there that did, uh, was funny because he left the, the, uh, the draft uh, tap open when he carbonated it and the stuff went all over. But uh, he turned out okay. So, anyway, moving on. They say you don't use as much priming sugar with your five gallon batch like you would normally use like, like eight ounces. Okay. Um, they say that any, anybody says anywhere from a half a cup to a third of a cup. I don't know. I got three gallons left. Okay. So that would mean I would use like a half a cup normally. I tried all calculations. But what I come up with is I'm going to use uh, just, just a little better than a third of a cup. Almost a half a cup and see how that goes. So we're going to put that in there in the boiling water. This is our priming sugar. You want to dump it in. I, I dump it in slow because sometimes that stuff could boil right over. Just don't clump it in. Now we get our spoon. Naturally sterilized. Everything has to be sterilized. Ooh, I sterilize it too much. I burn myself. Okay, so we stir that up. And we're going to let that bring to a boil. And isn't this exciting? Watching water boil. Maybe later on I'll take you outside. We can watch the grass grow. I think for Christmas we'll make ice cubes. That'll be fun. We can sit inside the freezer watch the water freeze. I'll be here all week, folks. Try to view. All right, well, you guys know how water boils. So when this is done, we're going to take it back down to the man cave and dump it on in the bottling bucket. And I'll see you this down there. what Lando says. Colt 45. It works every time. Hey, you folks, if you can't trust Lando Calrissian, who can you trust? All right, so that's our Star Wars bus section of the program here in the man cave. It's a filthy mess. Don't tell my girl that I filmed this down here with it being such a mess. So, we got our priming sugar all heated up and ready to put into the bottling bucket. So, there it goes, better or worse. There's no turning back now. That's for our Disney folks. So, we're going to give that a little turn with our big metal spoon. Just a little bit. We don't want to stir up too much sediment. So, that's going to be good. Now, we're going to get one of our bottles. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep you looking at the clean section of the main cave. Now I'm going to skillfully open the bottle. And there she goes into the official man cave Halloween bottle holder bucket. We're going to take our magic beer wand, insert it thusly, and start the beer flowing. Oh, don't fall off. See, I'm doing this with one hand, folks. Don't try this at home. I'd rather try this at home. I have a few for you to try it. All right, I got to grab this spigot real quick. And there it goes. There it flows. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can see. I don't want you to miss one thrilling moment of the bucket of the bottle being filled boy look at that go that's a good strong flow hey I'm a poet didn't know it all right so we have our priming sugar in the bottling bucket now the primed beer is flowing into the six liter bottle from tap a draft and this is going to be our natural uh, carbonation process like I said before, uh, there was comments online where the beer bottles blow up, too much sugar. 
we're going to see if the uh, proof's in the pudding and uh, test this out fully. I'm going to come back in about 14 days and hey, if the beer's still in there and it didn't blow up, I'll count myself lucky. But uh, we got a little trick we're going to we're going to do to store this beer, so in case the unthinkable happens, we'll be prepared for it. And I'll show you what that is after I fill this one and uh, get the other one filled. See you soon. Okay, so here we are. Back at the patriotic man cave. God bless America. And we've got our naturally carbonated bottles all filled up. Now the one is filled, like I said, about an inch from the top. The other one's about, I would say, maybe one-fifth empty. So the three bottles do hold your five gallons of brew as you know some of that evaporates uh, during fermentation and stuff like that. So these are our sugar primed, uh, I should say priming sugar primed bottles. Now I'm going to store them um, vertical with the caps up. Okay. Some people say, and this is another controversy online, uh, that you store them you know horizontal. Some people say uh, face up. Some people say they lose carbonation if you store them one way. I'm so confused I can't remember which is which. And you know some people say the bottles up. So anyway, I got a big old uh, uh, party cooler here, and I'm going to store these suckers uh, vertical, you know, with, with the caps up, and they're naturally primed ones. So we're going to check back on them in about 14 days, and they should be ready to carbonate or uh, actually put the they're, they're carbonating now. They should be able to. Uh, have the um, tap a draft system uh, installed on them with the CO2 so we, we, we could pump them out. But of course, before we do that, we have to cool them off so we have some nice ice cold beer on tap. Okay, so we had our uh, six liter bottle in the refrigerator for a while. It's nice and cool to the touch. And we're going to go ahead and uh, install the uh, CO2 uh, system and see if we can get some forced carbonation. So let's crack it open and see what happens here. Whoa, got a little bit of fizz in there. I guess that's a good sign, even though there is, remember, no priming sugar in here. So we have the, uh, the tap system here. And uh, it's got a little safety thing here, so you know, and then you can lock it uh, closed. I saw the other guy on YouTube, he uh, actually tried to carbonate it and he left the valve open. and had quite humorous results but uh, we won't want to mention his name because he's a fellow beer brewer and uh, we've got to maintain our dignity so in the forward position like so it is open so you want to see if I can do this with one hand to show you just crank it back and then you push this little red doodad in and that locks it closed so we're gonna go ahead and uh, Again, I got my six liter uh, bottle with no priming sugar, and it's in the, the beer holding Halloween bucket. Once again, hold it up right, and we're just going to put this in here and it's, just screw it on like so. And uh, let's see, I don't know if you guys can see the. Uh, the nubs on the legs but we're going to try to uh, swing the top around so it's even with that let me sorry for the camera angle I'll keep rolling let me just put this down for just a second tighten it down until it becomes straight well it's going to take some doing Okay, I actually, I actually got, oh, sorry about that. Alright, you guys still with me? Good. So I actually got it uh, kind of level down here. Now remember, tap closed. We're going to take one of the 16, uh, 16 gram CO2 cartridges, like so. Boy, I wish I had somebody filming with me. Uh, we're going to put it into the holder. That comes with it, just like so. And then we're going to screw this sucker on there. And we should hear a little fizz. Let's listen. A little, a 
little spritz. Did you guys hear that? I don't want to crank it down too much because I might break it. go okay that's on there she's all locked in boy that, that that bottle got hard real quick there's no play in it there was a little play in it before but not now so now we're gonna pop it in the refrigerator and uh, seven days it should be a nice frosty carbonated draft beer all right folks I put this six liter bottle in there Again, no priming sugar, and I hooked up the CO2 tap system to it, and that's going to be it for a while. I have my other uh, six-liter bottles over in the uh, beer cooler, naturally uh, carbonating, and I'm going to check back on this in about seven days, and hopefully we'll have some nice tasty beer to sample. All right, well, we'll see you soon. All right, we're seven days into the process and my natural carbonation is coming along nicely. The bottles are getting nice and firmed up. The more important thing is that nothing has exploded, either in the uh, almost full bottle and the completely full bottle. So I would assume that the uh, carbonation is uh, taking place. Now we're going to head all over to the refrigerator and see how our uh, forced carbonation system is working. All right, we're going to see how our uh, forced carbonation has worked. Remember, this is the uh, the bottle that has no priming sugar in it, just the CO2 that came with the uh, tap draft system. And like I said, it's been exactly seven days, so we're going to see how that works. Okay, there's our system. I moved it up to the top shelf for ease of use. So let's go ahead and open that up. We're going to unlock it. And, uh, hmm. I don't know if I could hold it and get the, the spigot to work, but we're going to. There we go. That looks good. Looks good. Getting a bit of a good head on it. Looks like it's flowing nicely. And I'm just going to take a, about a half a glass because uh, I'm trying to save this. It's around Christmas time now. I'm trying to save that for Christmas. So here's our uh, here's our beer. Very nice amber color. It's a honey a honey um, brown ale, and uh, it's got a nice little head on it. Looks real good. Let me give it a little whiff here. Nice bouquet. Ooh, smells very nice. And the proof's in the pudding. So I'm gonna try to turn this sucker around and focus on me taking a sip. You're gonna see my ugly face now, folks. I'm going to take small children out of the room. Here we go. Hmm. Folks, tastes like money. Let me tell you. I'll do this again and again. The forced carbonation has worked perfectly. It's got a nice bit of carbonation to it. Uh, perfect for an ale or any other beer for that matter. So the Tapakeg forced carbonation system works perfectly again uh, this is the keg that is only using co2 to carbonate not any kind of priming sugar and it sat in there for seven days and it works perfectly so we're going to wait another seven days and see how the natural carbonation stuff tastes after we drink this one at christmas we're going to tap the other keg with the natural carbonation and i'll let you know how that turns out okay here we go Just a quick side note, folks. Um, I did have to use two of the CO2 cartridges on the forced carbonation uh, unit. Um, you know, the one without the priming sugar in it. And uh, the CO2 cartridges of these suckers. The 16 grams, I think they are. So I did have to use two of them. 
and I put the second one on just before I, I tapped the keg for the uh, the delicious uh, brew that I just poured and drank. So one did carbonate it fully, you know, forced carbonation, and the other one I just put on there to to force the, the beer out to use it as a as a flow uh, thing for better. So it's going to take you two cartridges to um, force carbonate your beer, basically. Just thought you might want to know that little tidbit.